All right, bro. Brazil's Copa America. I'm going to start us off with the largest truth pill that we might drop on this video. This Copa America campaign for Brazil, bro, I'm giving it a B. B grade. Straight B. And you know why? Because this team ain't that good. You ain't that good. You lost to Uruguay in penalties. You didn't concede during the game. That was a good thing. Rochette makes a couple big saves. You go out. Sounds about right to me. Sounds about right to me. Brazil making the finals. Massive success. This current version of Brazil, said in the preview, I'm saying it again, would have been a massive success. You guys disagree? Let us know in the comments. But I'm going B, dude. I think they did almost exactly what they needed to. Should it be Costa Rica? But other than that, they did almost exactly what I expected and needed them to do. I'm going to put my hater hat on for this. Can you put it on? Mm. Dude, I think I got to go. I think I got to go C minus. C minus. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you why. Because I got, I, I got the hater hat on right now. I'm going to tell you right now. I was personally a fan of the way that they handled the White Walkers in Game of Thrones, right? There's all this hype, there's all this buildup, there's lore behind it, right? They are the most pressing danger in this world. There is the encroaching apocalypse that is the Long Winter and the White Walkers. Now, when that, spoiler alert, when that sort of situation manifested in the White Walker army, right? The apocalypse comes to Winterfell, and it is the forces of the living versus the force of, you know, the undead that is the White Walkers. A lot of people were not happy with how that was handled. I didn't hate it, but I imagine that this is what it felt like. So when I say C- minus for Brazil, I don't think that their achievements are outside of what I expected in this World Cup, or in this World Cup, in this Copa América, I don't think that I'm really all that shocked outside of the fact that it is one thing to anticipate this and to expect that based on what you see on paper. It is another thing to actually witness Brazil play in the manner that they did because this is, like, this is Brazil. This is Brazil. Like, I have never not been scared of them until this tournament, you know? That's like, it's Argentina's kryptonite. It's, it is the big bad if, if, you know, I think in this metaphor, we're not even Superman. I think they're Superman and we are Lex Luthor, you know? But ironically enough, they're our weakness. They're the arch nemesis. They're Batman and you're Robin. Now, I waited a minute. <laughs> <laughs> but genuinely, I have never, not been worried about Brazil until this tournament. When I saw them play, I said, they're not making it to the final. I don't think we're going to have to worry about them. They were taken off of my anxiety list. Did you really have to see the Copa America start? Because I hear what you're saying and I agree. But again, if you've watched Brazil in qualifying, if you know who these guys are, if you know how the big guns show up and they don't for the national team, Anybody who had Brazil winning in your prediction should be court-martialed. Court-martialed, sent to Azkaban. I mean, I'm not even kidding. Like, send them to, I don't know if there's a better mythical jail that we can, we can use. What, what, where's the, what's the goddamn prison in Pirates of the Caribbean? You know, it's like the first scene in oh, Dead Man's Chest. Oh, dude, I don't know what it's called. I don't know what it's qual called, but I mean. Yes, that one. Send them there, because that looked like a scary place. It looked horrifying. Yes, definitely. Rehabilitation there, minimum. Correct, because this team doesn't have goal scorers. They have a midfield that's good on paper, but they don't work well together. There's, they're not part of the offensive, offensive buildup at all. Brazil is bypassing the midfield. What the hell is that? They had the worst fullbacks in the history of the Brazilian national team. These guys can't really go forward at all. I thought Danilo and Wendell were decent defensively. And then you have... The center backs and they're they're good, but they're not great. They're not as good as Ecuador's. They're not as good as Uruguay's. They're not as good as Argentina's. They're probably not even as good as a unit as Venezuela's, for the love of God. And then you have Allison, who he gonna do his thing, and you only concede 
two goals in the Copa America, and congratulations for that. That's one of the dubs from Brazil, is that you can come in here being so, so bad, tan horrible, tan feo, and you still only concede twice. And again, you still only lose to Uruguay on penalties. And what was, by the way, the worst game at the Copa America? Bar maybe, none. Bar none? You know what's my second worst game? Chile, Peru. God, that's a great one. You know what's my third? What? Brazil, Costa Rica. You had two of the three worst games of this Copa America. Uruguay, I understand, because it's Uruguay. That's a Conmebol Clásico. Like, you're just not going to get a shooter there. You couldn't score in Costa Rica? And you know what they're saying right now, Connor, in the comments? They're saying that the, uh, the match would have gone a completely different way, but Vinicius had a penalty call that wasn't made. My response to that fictitious response, which may or may not articulate itself in the comments, is that if you are Brazil and you are relying on a penalty shout to beat a Costa Rican team that shouldn't have even been at the Copa America if we look at what their trajectory was, a team that was starting some teenagers in the back line against you, oh, how the mighty have fallen. How the mighty have fallen. Like, I, I, dude, I think I have to fall back again and say it's one thing to anticipate this stuff. It's one thing to say it on paper. I still hold my breath when watching Brazil because they are Brazil, you know? I'm just conditioned to be afraid of this, but, I mean, it was almost toothless. It was almost toothless. They are. They are toothless. I imagine this is what the barbarians thought when Rome began to fall, you know? Yeah. And they started to notice, like, the borders, the Rhine, not quite as well defended as they used to be. They're, they're, they're taking down some of their outposts. Seems like they're kind of falling back a little. What the hell? They're incorporating German foreigners in the in the legions. These this these are the guys that made my grandfather afraid to go south. Like I'm having a field day here. Yeah. I mean, literally, Brazil has fallen from power, and it's seemingly like the rest of Conmebol and Concacaf have risen. Most of the teams. At least most of the teams. It's it's just very strange. And I will say out and out right now. I'm not happy that Brazil is bad. I am. Ironically enough, the Argentine is not happy, but the ethnically ambiguous gentleman to my right, whose heritage will be revealed at 100K? 100K? <laughs> Hit subscribe. Hit subscribe. Oh, I- I'm, I'm, I'm laughing. I mean, laugh all the way to the bank. It just feels very strange to watch a once formidable power, you know, fall to this level. But you know what? Maybe I will take some solace in the fact that this is what they look like without Neymar. Because I've been a Neymar defender for, I mean, since as long as I've been watching football. I, I like him. He's friends with Messi. He's an ally to Argentina. Like, if there's one Brazilian that we're going to the bank for, or going to war for it, it's, it's Neymar. It's Neymar. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's just, it just left a bad taste in my mouth because, you know, the first Copa America, incredible, because we win at the Maracana against Brazil. There. Done. Done and dusted. It's everything that we wanted. And maybe I don't feel like we've achieved as much because we didn't get the big one. And maybe that's the staple victory that Argentina was missing on the road to the the finals that we were talking about. That's what keeps them from the A+, right? The campaign was decisive, but we didn't get the trophy to bring back home. The, the, the prize, um, what is it? We didn't get the prize buffalo, the prize lion head. Right. Colombia is not the white moose. Stat. It's not the white bull moose no, that we were looking it's for. it's not. Yeah. It should be, but because Colombia have won Copa America, because they didn't qualify for the last World Cup, People won't look at a team on a 28-game win streak. They'll just say, ah, Colombia. I mean, they're not even a top-five power in Colombia Bowl all time. So I think in that sense, I agree. It would have been more illustrious for the plastics if you guys beat Brazil in the final. Yeah. But for those who know ball, beating Colombia was far more. Beating Colombia was far more impressive because they were by far, and I said this in the Argentina video, I said this in probably a couple other ones too, just rehashing this at this point. They were the best team at Copa America. Better than Argentina, yep. better than Uruguay, better than Brazil. Better they were the best. 
They were the best. And they played the best kind of football. Like, if we want to draw a Euro comparison, Colombia was Spain. Colombia was Spain. Colombia. They had the hardest path. They played the prettiest football, the best chemistry. They were the best. I think Brazil would be, ironically, Portugal, if we're going to keep Yeah, I think, I think you have to say. You would, you would say Portugal losing to Georgia in the group stage is equivalent to Brazil drawing Costa Rica. In the group stage, I said B. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna downgrade it to a B minus because you need to be Costa Rica. Like that's absolutely effing embarrassing. That's a non-negotiable, it's especially a non-negotiable. when when a player on your team has Ballon d'Or shouts, and he's firing. Had Ballon d'Or shouts. Had Ballon d'Or shot, shouts, because that's gone now. Should we go into biggest winners and biggest losers from these guys, or are we saving yes, that for the end? Happened. Biggest loser, Vinicius. Really? One hundred percent. I'm gonna say. I'm going to say it's Hendrick. Okay. I, I want to hear. I think I might disagree because I think there was so much to lose for Vinicius. In fact, I do out now disagree. He had a Ballon d'Or on the line. You had excellent scaffolding, you know, to, to stay in that conversation. Even if you don't win, if you get to a final or if you put on— Semis for the love of God. Semis for the love of God. Put up more than, than two goals. You're telling me that Lautaro Martinez— Lautaro Martinez, with two starts, what, two more games played? Yeah. Less minutes, probably. Or same amount of minutes? I, I would uh, marginally more? Same, because Vinicius was suspended for the— Uruguay Vinicius game. was suspended for that game. Okay, valid. The dialogue for him in regards to the Brazilian national team, I think, turned for the positive marginally. But the end result, I think, yeah, two more, two more goals. I, I, I would throw oh, that in. I thought in. you were saying going into the Copa America, he had a No, 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 no. He had a negative, and I think yeah, he yeah. turned it like, okay, well, I can't do something here. Looking forward to, to more, right? That was like a spark. We need to see an actual flame now. But, dude, he just had so much on the line. And, I mean, he has fallen from the very top to out of the conversation. Like, if he's still in the top five for Ballon d'Or shouts, I think that is outrageous and unjust, frankly. I would say my opinion. If you guys disagree, you know, if you think Vinicius is the biggest loser, if you think Junior is the biggest loser, I don't care who, let us know in the comments. For me, I think Vinicius did the bare effing minimum to personally protect himself. Face. Correct. I think he saves a little face because, one, he can say, I didn't play against Uruguay. And it was a very close game if I was there. And you know the, you know the Real Madrid fans are saying, well, if they had Vinicius, they would have. Let's not get into that. I think he, he, he protects himself. He uses his, his overshield with that. And he did get two goals, albeit against Paraguay, who were an, an embarrassment to the competition. I think that shields him just, mm, like, just enough. Whereas Endrick, and I think this is unfair. I want to preface that. I like Endrick. I have nothing against Endrick. I have nothing against Vinicius, honestly. I just think it's, I think it's healthy for Brazilians for your team to be down bad. That's all. I think it's good to know what that feels like. And, and when we did collab with the give and go, and I said that making the semis would be a success, everybody was like, no, you're, like, you're an idiot. We're going to win. We, we want the final. And blah, blah. Okay, just have a little bit of humble pie. Just a little bit. Hold that. Yes. Hold, hold a two-piece. Hold a two-piece. For the Costa Rica. That's, that alone is an L. But anyways, Endrick's reputation, I think, took a big hit because... He's next up, whether that's fair or not. That's what he's been labeled as. He played a full 90 and completed one pass, which was the opening kickoff against Uruguay. Did you know that? No. I had no idea. He played 90 minutes and had one completed pass. I mean, he was quiet, but that is a shocking stat to hear and metabolize. See, this is what I'm saying. It's one thing to sort of understand where they stand and where you know, they've fallen. It's another thing to witness it, you know? Like, to actually metabolize that and to be there for that and for that to, like, fit in my mind and make sense. Like, comprehending that is, I mean, it's almost, it's almost unbelievable. Correct. And, and again, he's not a bum. He no, doesn't no, no. suck. We're not saying any of that stuff. We were talking him up going into the Copa America. And I'm still bullish on Hendrick. Yeah. But you have to say the haters will love what they just saw. The haters, every single Barcelona simp out there oh is going to have a field day with this. 
They already have. They're like, this is what she paid for? This is next up? Is this all you can conjure, Saruman? Yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, they're like, well, we're going to get Nico Williams. And anyways, I think Endrick's reputation is a big hit. And I think it's, it was very apparent he's not ready yet. Not for this. No, no, not for this. And La Camisa Pesa, we say this all the time with, with Brazil. Love of, the love of God. It's one of the most storied, if not the most storied national team. It is the most storied national team. Give him some time. But the press won't. The media won't. That's why I think he's a loser. Because it just proved that the, the moment was a bit too big. You can pop your collar all you want. You, you just didn't have what you needed in the moment, what your team needed you to provide in this moment. And that's okay. But I think that's, a, that's the truth. Do you think Durival... Junior, do you think he's a big loser from this, being Brazil's manager? No, because my expectations weren't sky high for him anyway. You know, like this doesn't shock me. What did shock me was when they had the circle before they went to Penns, yeah. that they were leaving him out. That's not a good look, That's one. Weird. And it's strange. Yeah. Weird. He needs to be the linchpin, the hinge that that they rely on in moments like that, right? Like, his word needs to be law. I don't care how good of a manager you are. If the players don't listen to you, that's an issue, right? Now, he's not the biggest loser because he didn't just show up and get kicked right out. He still has an opportunity to do some good with this Brazil team. But what I would say is that he's in a really difficult position now. I wouldn't call him a loser for it, but just by nature of what happened here, I think he's got... Two World Cup qualifiers before his job comes into question. He is now in the hottest Correct. seat in Conmebol. He is in the hottest seat in Conmebol, as it stands. Yes, because the other hottest seat was Felix Sanchez, and he's gone. And he's out. And he's out. But even then, I would say the pressure for Felix Sanchez isn't the same that it is for Dorival. Like, right, the, what you want from Ecuador is so much more, and I understand that. But... His job was already in question, right? There was potential for Junior. There were lots of questions coming in because you compete against some very good European teams and you have Endrick firing and, okay, what's going to happen? Okay, well, it didn't pay off here. You still have to understand that he does not have many games in charge and that another opportunity is still warranted in spite of this performance. There's not many opportunities. I'm telling you, two games go poorly and the man, even if they go well, but not to the standard that Brazil holds them to, drawn into question. Guarantee it. Yeah. I think Junior's biggest L, if you want to call it that, from the Copa America is not being able to beat Costa Rica. I'm going to say it again. But if you look at the the game against Uruguay, I think you have to give him a little bit of credit for that. And to, to defend and put some respect on Brazil, which maybe we've been harsh this video. I don't particularly, I'm, I'm not too bothered by that, but you did tie Colombia. The hottest team in international football. You tied them. Rafinha free kick. Didn't do much else. You tied them. You tied Uruguay. That ain't bad. You destroyed Paraguay. And then you tied Costa Rica. You didn't actually take an L. You just lost on penalties. You know what I mean? So, and, and that's, again, that's about what I expected. And that's why I don't think you can call Junior a big loser. He's certainly not a winner, but he's just kind of there. He's, he's like a... He's like a, a, a Jao Gomez for Brazil. He was, ah, you know, he was there. And Danilo was like, okay. He, Danilo did a bit about what I expected. Yeah. And I, I think that's why you say that this, like, I'm, I'm just going to throw this out there. Stagnancy in Brazil's eyes is an L. And that's why I graded Correct. them so low. Great. But Great. when you take into, you know, the context of, of his presence there and what he's done, I don't think you can give him all of the blame. That's why I don't think he's a loser. I don't think the full culpability comes down to him because the players, the organization, the federation, the team as a whole is a loser. He's just a piece of that. Not all the culpability falls on him, so I don't think you can out and out say, boom, loser, you're to blame. Who takes the flack, you think? I think it's honestly very evenly distributed. I think people will point at Junior, but my counter to those people is every problem with this Brazil side was already there. You know, it's not like Junior came in and all of a sudden the midfield underperforms. It's not like Junior came in and all of a sudden they concede. Well, he didn't make anything worse. It's stagnancy. It's the same. Yeah, and you could even say he 
I would say positives from Junior. I think he has somewhat stabilized the back line. I think he's introduced Savio, Savinho, who I think is one of the few winners for Brazil at this Copa America. Got minutes for the first time. Man of the match in one of the games. Got himself a goal, maybe an assist too. I can't remember. And limited sample size. You've introduced Hendrik, and he's been successful despite the Copa not going great. And Vinicius, I mean, he's got, he's got 40% of his goals under you as manager in four games. That ain't bad. That ain't bad. And I think maybe that's where the positives end. Who are the winners, if any? I mean, I'm, I'm going to go Savio, Savinho for, for Brazil. Young right winger. I think he had a good tournament. Any other, any other candidates? I have a couple. Of- I, was, I was happy to see Rafinha. Rafinha did a little bit better. Yeah, Listen, yeah, 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 he yeah. did better than what I anticipated, yeah, yeah, yeah. which in this Brazilian squad, we're you know, scrounging for, for winners. We're scrounging for positives here. It just is what it is. I was pretty content with what he was able to bring to the table, and um, I think he's locked himself in for the set-piece taker for that team, yeah. right? Yeah. Especially with Neymar out. Like, he is the option there. Um, and then outside of that, I mean... Allison's still good. In case anybody, any of you forgot, Allison's yeah, still yeah. that guy. What was it? I think he faced 13 shots and conceded two. Yeah. The other 11 were direct saves. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, he's top three goalkeepers in, in the life. world. Yeah. I mean, and he's, he's holding that down for anybody, any of the doubters out there. I'm going to say minor dub. This is, this is a personal one, Marquinhos. And I'm saying that because I saw a lot of people online saying that this guy was falling off and that he was bad. Maybe it's just me. Give me Marquinhos over Militao in the, in the back, especially for, for the Selección. That's not how they said it. Selecao. Selecao. Is it Selecao or Selecao? Selecao. Selecao. Give, for the Selecao, dude, Marquinhos still doing his thing. Still looks crazy dangerous on set pieces. I mean, he's Capitan material. One of the most underrated defenders for Brazil that I've seen. Because he plays in France. Because he plays in France. Yeah. So I think minor dub for him. And I think you got to go dub for Neymar's legacy. Dub for Neymar's legacy. What a great shout. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, Neymar's legacy. Neymar's legacy. Impact. Yeah. Because if they had won without him, oh, the, the haters, it's going to be like a piranhas, Crawling dude. Crawl, termites. It's going to be, it would have been disgusting to All see. The, the Endrick fans that are being clowned by the Barcelona fans right now, they would have just come out of the woodwork and they would have been like, he's finished. Yeah. They would have, they would have been like, you know what's the appropriate response to us winning a Copa that we didn't deserve? Let's go clown one of our best players ever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Self-destructive, really. I mean, look, as a Mexican-American, I know that well. I know, I know how we do our own. I've seen it. As a Latin American, I know that well. <laughs> this is an old, the story is old as time. <laughs> like, someone's on the up, you got to tear that man down immediately. Um, what do you think is the international fan base's response to what Brazil did at this Copa America? What do you think they're saying right now in Europe, in Asia, if, even in the United States? I don't think they're saying anything about Brazil. I think they're saying it about the Copa America in general. The real haters out there are going to be like, oh my God, Brazil wasn't even good this tournament, so it doesn't even count. Like, you didn't face real opposition. They also don't know that Colombia was on a 28-game win streak or undefeated streak. They also don't know that Uruguay has Bielsa, you know, or if they do, they're like, isn't that the coach that did really poorly at Leeds? Not the coach that brought them up from the championship and, you know, (laughs) made them competitive in the league. None of that. They're taking the rest of the intangibles out, the rest of the context out. They're just focusing on that. I agree. I think in Europe, maybe, I think they're taking a hit. Like, I think the integrity is taking a bit of a hit. I think I've used this analogy or metaphor before. It's like the Spartans, right? Everybody thought the Spartans were invincible until the Battle of Leuctra when they were defeated by Thebes. And then once they lost that battle, everyone's like, wait a minute, these guys aren't invincible? Like, maybe we can actually go at them? It's, we talk about aura a lot in football. The aura's taken a hit. The aura's taken a hit, 100%. It's like Manchester United. You're not scared to go to to Old Trafford anymore. You're not scared to play Brazil. Maybe in the Maracanã, you're still a little scared. But, I mean, even Venezuela got a draw there. But it's not like uh, Venezuela. It's not like Brazil walk on the pitch and you're like quaking. I don't, I don't think they strike 
fear. I don't think there's a morale debuff for the opponent like there used to be. Do you agree? I, I think I agree. You're not looking at the Ronaldo haircut the same way. Like the days of Ronaldinho on the cover of FIFA 08, it's not the same. The skill moves don't hit. Anymore. Things will never be the same. I mean, that was a different era. Also, RIP FIFA, the video game, and the organization. The organization was never up, to be clear. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> I think that uh, Jogo Bonito will be back. How does that manifest? We don't really know. Right now, the haters are, you know, selling on Endrick hard. I think that's a little bit unfair. We'll see how that manifests later. We're still waiting on the Neymar return. He's going to be a grizzled, seasoned, scarred veteran scarred. by the time he comes back. And we're going to see how that we're going to see how that manifests. I have to say this because it's deserved. Rodrigo was absolutely awful. This Copa America, we should have brought him up with the losers. And this guy gets away with murder time and time again because Vinicius always takes the heat. You know what I'm saying? Vinicius doesn't score. Everyone's like, he sucks. Rodrigo can literally turn into Casper the Ghost for 25 games straight. No one says anything. But he says a damn word. And that is shocking from somebody who, up until now, up until Endrick and Mbappe and all these players were here, everybody's like, boy, he's the guy. He's, he's going to be next up, you know, but he's always living in Vinicius' shadow so he doesn't catch the flack. I mean, you almost have to give him, he's like the Waluigi of Di Maria. You know, Di Maria, most underrated, well, this guy gets all this clout, and for what? Every time we talk about him, it's like, oh, well, he's not performing, he's playing out of position. What's his position? Yeah. What's, where is it? What, what is it? Tell me. Tell me, because I, I haven't seen it. I have no reason to be scared of him. If I'm not scared of Brazil... He's a piece of Brazil. He's one of their major attacking. If you know, he's the metaphorical spear point. It's blunt. What what am I supposed yeah. to be afraid of here? Yeah. He, I I could not tell you a defining Rodrigo moment that I am terrified terrified of. Not with the national team, and th- and that's what's weird with him is that he's one of the few players I feel like he's not judged by club football. I mean, sorry, he's only judged by club football. He's not judged with the Brazilian national team. I, I, I don't get that. Maybe it's because his, his personality is kind of passive, whereas Vinicius is, like, extremely polarizing. He, he has a brand. Rodrigo doesn't really have that. No. His brand is, like, why does he look kind of like Bangladeshi? That's, yes. like, literally his brand, which that doesn't really translate to interviews. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what his social media game. Maybe it's crazy, but I, I don't follow any Brazilians on, on social media. I mean, I do probably follow a few, just not with the Senegal. What Brazilians do you follow? I've made a few friends. Friends, you say? Friends. Past. Past. Past consultants. Teammates, Strictly. all the time, all the time, all the time. If anyone's seen that Emily Chapa meme, please comment down below. All the time. No, uh, I'm always business. Can't you? Can't you tell? I mean, I'm not wearing the short shorts today, but usually I am. I'll, I'll carry it today. Yeah, you, you are carrying the thighs out right now. Oh. It is. I literally had to bust out this jacket or this sweater because I was getting a little. I was getting a little chilly over here any closing thoughts or maybe last question is brazil officially no i'm gonna ask it this way rank brazil and call me ball right now look at qualifiers fifth i think you got to put them fifth they are they are fifth so keep it Keep it. If it ain't if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Cause I mean, I talked about stagnancy. Nothing changed. Nothing changed here. What Argentina reasserted themselves as number one by you know strict production, if not actual performance. So what you could make an argument for Colombia? I think you could. I think you could make the argument Colombia cemented too. Yes. Yeah. Uruguay firmly third. I think firmly. Third. Firmly three? Firmly. Not Paraguay? Paraguay have sunk so low, it's actually insane. God, I love Enciso. 
I'm like throwing up the bat signal like in Cecil, like, please, get out here. We do have to get him some body armor like Batman, just to keep him from getting hurt. Probably a midfield would help him. A midfield would probably be pretty beneficial. Man can't do anything if he doesn't get the ball. Teammates who don't play volleyball in their own box. Is that not what we were watching? I think that's what Villasante thought he was playing. Are they going to the Olympics? Not for men's volleyball. Women's volleyball? We can only hope. God willing. Anyway, that's we will be covering that on the Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> Women's South American volleyball. Yeah, special channel announcement. It's going to be the new segment. Uh, you, you know, guys, you guys were asking for the Sudamericana. You were pulling for video games, games, live streams. Yeah. yeah, Halo Legendary playthrough. Oh, actually, we landed on women's national team volleyball in South America. Our entire American view base is like, where's the women's national team? And we're like, we're doing a hard transition. Like, oh, it will be the women's national team, just not football. <laughs> what were you even saying? Okay, could closing you, you thoughts. You probably should Brazil. say Brazil are four, right? Because you can't say, you can't say Venezuela. Ben. No, they're four. They're four. Yeah. They're four. I th- I okay, I'll concede. I think top four is like, like a newly built brick wall. Like that cement is healthy, it's fresh. The wall ain't coming down anytime. No, 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 no. It stood, and that is staying for a while. We've got a we've got a pretty large span until we start looking at you know redesigning the kitchen. Yes, it's like the Great Wall of the Platense. The Great Wall of the Platense. That sounds good. Yeah. I think, I think we roll with that. Let's roll with it. That's what we're rolling with. We, we probably end it. the video there. I don't really have anything else to say about that. No da para mas. Hit subscribe. Hit subscribe for more Copa America content. Drop a like on the video. Let us know your thoughts down below. We'll see you guys in the next one, I guess.